and, uh, and, I, and the Spirit of God came on me. And I said, there are five witches or Satanists or something that I said, yeah, that's here to kill me. I said, reveal yourself now, yeah. They, didn't, they, weren't scared. they came running with knives this big to the front, to the stage. That's crazy. So welcome to Kingdom Unleashed. Our mission is to revive the church, unlock the fivefold, and equip the saints. Doing ministry in the kingdom of God isn't always easy. When you walk in the power of God, there will be opposition. In this session, Prophet Leon Dupree shares a few epic miracle stories of how God has moved powerfully through him and his church. But he also shares some significant opposition that they have experienced. This interview, part two of the interview, will stir your faith and help you to overcome the challenges of life and ministry. Prophet Leon, thanks. Uh, some wonderful stories. Great to hear the, the your journey with the Lord. And, and I love stories because stories unlock faith, testimonies mm, of what God has done. It unlocks faith amen. in the body of Christ. And that's why I love sharing stories. I love listening to stories because it, it stirs that faith in us for the more yes, of God. Yes, you know, and I'm yes. trusting even as we listen to more of your stories, they will release faith to each one listening so that they can encounter Jesus for themselves. Amen. So, I mean, you planted a church, yes. you uh, really felt, I mean, you had this encounter with an angel commissioning yes. you to plant encounter church. And then and a lot- And my leadership, I just wanna make that clear, you know, so they confirmed it and they blessed it. Yes, and you submitted the, yeah. the encounter to your leadership. They confirmed mm. that it is of God and they mm. gave you the, the go ahead to, to plant the church. Yes. And the Lord has really blessed it and your, your church, you, you got churches and the campuses are growing. And, mm. and, and so you called it Encounter Church. Yes. So obviously an encounter is a, an important value. Yes, uh, yes. To you and to your church. So maybe take us through some encounters, some, maybe some of your own encounters, but also encounters that other people have had and how God has uh, transformed their lives through your ministry and through the yeah. church. Um, we touched a little bit on, 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 on encounters before, but I want to just share with you relative to the church now. You know, we, first of all, we named it Encounter Church because uh, that was our ministry and this is what the Lord always told me. But in the encounter, the, the, when the angel visited me to plant, he very specifically said, it'll be a church of the supernatural. So first I called it Encounter Church and I said, call it, uh, quotation, the church of the supernatural, you know, uh, like a tagline. And I was like, no, I took it out because I understand in the beginning you want families and they offended by this. So I call it a church for families, but, um, <laughs> but I know it was, in, it was, I, mean, I was always hungry for God. I love the presence of God. Yes. I was praising for encounters. I had a revival ministry. So I'd be going from church to church every week, preaching revival, having conferences. Um, and the end goal of that would be for people to have an encounter with Jesus Christ, not mm-hmm. an altar call. Auto calls is automatic, you know, but but an encounter because I believe one encounter is worth a thousand sermons. Absolutely, uh, one experience, a true genuine experience, is worth yes. a thousand sermons. So, yeah, so I, just on that, I'm, I've seen it. I've seen people who they were so broken, so messed up emotionally, mentally, physically. Yes. One encounter is like in one moment they experience more than ten years of counseling this, and therapy and everything. Uh, yes. you know, absolutely. So. so, so you know, um, absolutely. It's, it's not the mean. It's not an end. Of itself, but it's a means to an end. But it's yes. not the end of itself. The end of itself is Jesus Christ. Everything must point to Christ. So, so yeah. So we had a lot of. I mean, our our, our name is synonymous, obviously, to an experience with the Lord. But our ministry is also synonymous to that. So, so we had a lot of encounters in our church. People experiencing things. Now, I mean, there's there's miracles, and you know, because this is not a secular show, it's nice because they're not here to to try to investigate. But I always told my guys, I said, any miracle that happens, any healing that happens, if we speak about it, let's get the medical report and let's get the signing off of the person giving us the right to use it. They witnessing about it, testifying about it with the ID number, and we keep it like that. And we got many files. So we got first healing we got in the church was when we just planted the church. Now, before I tell you that, it's just that because of the angelic encounter, I believe all the visitation I had re- relative to the church, a lot of people I believe can plant a church because it's a good thought, you know. Um, uh, but when God speaks to you that clearly, we explode it. We really explode it. Um, you know, we're sitting now six, seven years later with four campuses um, uh, and, and you know, owning a lot of assets and so on. And it, it, God's clear hand of blessing was on it. And um, But when we started, we exploded. So there was a first miracle 
that took place. It was around about the first few weeks of the church. When I say miracle, like a really evident, prominent miracle. A lady came, she's now on our leadership, you know. Uh, she came stage four cancer. She couldn't eat anything for six months, couldn't get liquids down, battled to get liquids down, had to put on drips and stuff like that. And she was malnourished. She was like a skeleton come walking to the place. I remember she came walking to the place. They gave a death sentence. They said, you've got a few months left. And um, uh, she came, I rebuked the spirit of death, you know. This scream came out of her. And... Uh, and I said, go to the back and eat something now. Go eat. And they took her to the back. They bought food. And they began to make her eat immediately. And she could swallow for the first time. Come on. And then, uh, now she's on our leadership. She's on our leadership. She's healed completely from that day. The cancer went into remission. Yeah, I mean, I mean the doctors like to call it remission. Okay, yes. so when it goes into remission, never came up. Uh, from that now, seven years, still Praise healed. God. Got the medical report of that. The doctor saying this is a miracle. Yeah. It was the first one. You know, now obviously we've seen many miracles like yeah. that. Angelic encounters a lot at our church. Yes. So we had one phenomenal encounter um, that we were at a conference in our, so we had a small building. We started with our first building in 2016. Um, three months later, we moved out of that, got to a bigger building. And, uh, Bigger building, we began to fill up. Our conferences is packed out. And the one conference I was preaching on angels, I preached on the shaking of the mulberry trees, you know, and I was just on the stage in my thing. And hey, yeah, the crowd is a little awkward. I don't know exactly what's going on. I'm hearing like a crash on the roof. Now on the top of a mall, nobody can, no person can even get onto our ceiling. So it's not like people were working on the ceiling. So I hear these footsteps on the ceiling. And I thought, Jeez, is it like hailing? Because I thought maybe one hail is falling another. And I just, you know, while you're preaching, because I'm not fully focused on that. I'm not seeing the, the, the enormity of what is actually happening or the seriousness of what is happening. I'm just carrying on preaching. And, and people are silent, you know, like, like people are not like receiving from me. I'm like, what's going on? You know? And next thing I feel a wind and a storm. I hear a storm and I thought it's a big storm outside. And oh, that's just how I'm thinking. And the next thing I see people taking out their phones. I don't know what's going on. I'm just carrying on preaching. I'm just in the spirit. I carry on preaching. I finish the preach. I go to my office, priority from the stage, my office, getting my car to go. As I walk out, some of the team members said to me, um, and I think he was there. I'm not sure. Maybe he wasn't there yet, but uh, said they felt this wind coming, or they saw the wind coming in and it went through our media room and blew the papers up and they went through our office. That was while I was preaching on angels. But then they said, did you not see the building shaking? I said, no. They said, they said the whole building was shaking and the projectors began to shake out of place. It was like an earthquake. And, um, but there was no storm outside. There was no wind, no hail, no rain, no storm. So I'm confused. I get into the car and I check on social media. People begin to release the videos. So they took phone videos of when the shaking began to happen. So the whole building began to shake and the walls shake and you check the projector going, moving out of place as the sure. roof is shaking and the wall is shaking. And then that wind coming in. And then a lady went down in a car and she found cash sprayed out in a car like that. Now people attacked us a lot on that, but that's not my testimony. That's this lady's testimony. Still in our church, part of our leadership today. So I remember when I went to that meeting, I wrote to my journal, when I went to that meeting, I saw people being given cash, mm. you know, but obviously not a lot of people received the miracle, but this lady testified. She let us know the evening or the next morning that when she got to her car, her car was locked. There was cash and we have the photos of it. Have, there was cash spread out like that in her car, sure. you know, and I believe the supernatural, I mean, Jesus took a coin out of the fish's mouth. Yes. So when the building shaken, I mean, the scripture says that in Acts chapter number four, yeah. that the building was shaken by the power of God. Yeah. And I believe it was physically shaken there because we had a physical shake. These signs began to follow our ministry. Now, mm. when God calls a prophet, there are certain signs that follow that ministry to really um, approve or validate and affirm that they are of God. Yeah. And we have seen these signs following, I call them strange signs, just strange things. You'll be like sitting and all of a sudden, you know, weird things, strange things would happen in signs. You know, we see it all our scripture. Paul spoke about strange miracles. They spoke about Jesus having strange miracles. But you see them in the prophetic ministry. So, yeah, we have those encounters where it touched people. And obviously, we have had more cancer healings um, where we have the documents. We've had um, 
broken bones instantly healed, where we have the documents, x-rays instantly healed. We had um, many deliverances. So we deliverance began to broke out radically where we get mass deliverances, seven, 800 people, the deliverance, all of them. I think within the first four years of our ministry, we already took 1,200 people through deliverance. Um, it began to grow out, break out as a wave throughout our campuses all over the country. Um, we became very known for deliverance. And um, those are the encounters. People, financial breakthrough in our church was phenomenal. Um, bed cancellation all over. People receiving cars. If I have to ask in our conference, now, if you sit in our conference and our church is packed, and I say, lift up your hand if you've got a car since you come to encounter as a gift. You'll see hands going up all over. Sure. Gifts like people giving a car just like this. Houses given like this. You know, things that I, I wish I can get. I'm like, you know, you guys are reaping on, on my behalf here. But uh, <laughs> no, phenomenal gifts. Now, we're not training people to depend on financial miracles. You know, yes. people must, you know, you don't give somebody a fish and they can fish. You can eat a fish or you give some, teach somebody how to fish and they can fish yes. their life long. But um, yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, so, so I mean, a large p percentage of the world, they believe like God's dead. You know, and of course. Like and, the, sorry, I'm going to yeah. fall into reason, like the cessationist. You know, I always uh, Mark Driscoll make this quote. He's like, quote, he's like, it's the cessationist. He's like, they don't believe in the supernatural power of God, but yet they believe the devil is supernatural. You Which know. is weird. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, but exactly. People in large parts of the church today, they have more faith in the power of the devil yes, than yeah. the power of God. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and so these signs, these miracles, it gives evidence for the reality of God. You know, when somebody Absolutely. gets healed which we see all through scripture, it reveals Christ the healer. Or yes, when someone is yes. delivered, it reveals Christ the one who In delivers. Fact, it validates the word that is preached. Yes, yeah, that's, it that's does. I says. mean, that's what the apostle Paul said, you know, it confirms it unlocks faith that people have faith in God, not in man. Yes. yes, you know? yes. So it's wonderful to, to hear these stories, but uh, I mean, so, I mean, moving in, in the power of God, doing a lot of deliverance. And so obviously the devil doesn't like that. So you've had quite a bit of opposition. So even from Satanists, so maybe share some of the stories of, uh, of of uh, witches trying to oppose or coming yeah, against you guys. From day one, we had. I, I try to cool back down now and back down now and go into hiding and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> in the beginning, it was radical. In the beginning, it was radical. Any church that moves in power will have satanic opposition, physically satanic opposition. If you don't, you have to question whether you're moving in power or not. Um, and I'm very straightforward with that because you have some churches, oh, we have the power, but they never received any opposition. You know, Jesus made it very clear, you'll be persecuted more than I, you know. Um, um, uh, <clears throat> they'll persecute you more than what they persecute me. And uh, so from day one, we had witches following us, Satanists following us. We had Satanists threatening me uh, to death and many of them would die, you know, and uh, um, they would die. I, it's, I don't know how to explain it. When we get into doctrine, you know, uh, people don't really fully understand their own doctrine. They don't fully understand eschatology. So their whole way of reading scripture is confused. That's just my opinion. Uh, people take scriptures out of context and so on. They don't understand, okay, who does God judge? Does God judge the church? Does he judge the world? What is it in? Um, you know, whether God judges the church or not, I have my opinion on it because Paul is very clear. He says God judges the world, you know, but he disciplines the church. So there's a difference. So God's judgment does fall upon the world. We even see with Ananias and Sapphira, if you really get into the scripture, they were not Christians. They were, the Bible calls them by a certain title that they were business people coming into the church to try to extort the church from money. And then they wanted to explain to the church, everyone, how they gave this pieces of land. And, um, but they were holding part for it. They were holding it back because if they could be seen as given that land, if people would do business with them in the church. So that's where the Holy Spirit came and judged them and they fell dead, you know? So a lot of people confused then and say that God judges Christians. Uh, I believe we were judged already at the cross 2000 years ago, the moment I put my faith in Christ. That's what the scripture says. But we must not underestimate the fear of God, the awe, the respect, the reality of that you cannot even breathe in the holiness of God. You cannot, you know, if you have to stand as a mere man in the presence of God when it's really manifested. So if you as a Satanist or so begin to come and threaten the power of God, there's going to be a repercussion. So I'll tell you a few stories. We had very interesting stories, uh, very interesting stories. We had um, one person that threatened us and um, uh, they passed away um, to my I didn't know them personally, by the way, but they kept sending me messages and messages saying they're going to kill me and this and that. And I just heard six months later, that was where, you know, we were in a prayer meeting. We had an experience with an, with an angelic uh, encounter. And my team saw it and so on. And uh, 
this person was just sending me these messages and I'm just praying for them. Six months later, I heard, I mean, sending me death threats the whole time. You know, they were satanic high priests. Six months later, I heard they just stopped breathing in their room and they passed away. Um, but I, I was speaking of guys that were really high up. Another one, I was preaching in a church and um, we had, we, we did itinerant, we were doing itinerant ministry. You know, all these witches trying to come and sit in the church and try to intimidate me. And this one church just painted black, the church. So we're preaching this revival, all the Christians are singing faith songs and uh, they, uh, they, they, they're all brave, you know, and all of a sudden, and I'm still telling them, I'm like, yeah, you know, there's witches that follow me and so on. There's some in the service and, and they're like, yeah, full of faith. And there the power goes off of the building, trips, full black. Like you can't even see your hand in front of your face. And the church goes silent. Some begin to cry. So I'm like, I'm like, this is warfare. Let's go for it. So I turn to the band. So I'm like, guys, sing. I exalt. There's no power or anything I know, but just sing. I exalt thee. They, they said this to me. They said, I can't sing. I can't sing. I said, why not? They said, they can't sing. They, they're being choked. Mm. There's fear in the building, you know? So I turn around, I raise my hand. I begin to sing. I exalt thee. You know, I just worship. I exalt thee. I can't worship, but I mean, I can't sing. <laughs> and the whole church began to sing softly with me, you know? And, um, and, uh, and I, and the spirit of God came on me and I said, they are, five witches or satanists or something that I said, yeah, that's here to kill me. I said, reveal yourself now. Yeah. They didn't, they weren't scared. They came running with knives this big to the front, to the stage. <laughs> that's crazy. And uh, I was on the stage, a little bit of fear hit me. I was like, oh, they didn't, <laughs> oh expect, I think. didn't expect that one. <laughs> and then um, I remember jumping down from the pulpit onto them, began to pray, lay hands. Some of them got, all of them got under the power of God, but one got saved. Other one ran out, I started to run off to them, get them. But I mean, they had knives and bottlenecks to try to stab me. And then, um, I mean, there were pastors in the service. The one pastor got a, a panic attack and just wanted to go home. Didn't want to talk. We got a pan People, when there's that satanic confrontation, mm -hmm. If you're not strong in your faith, fear can, can come at you. You know, yeah. the devil plays on unbelief Absolutely. in your heart very yes. quickly. So we had those type of encounters. We had people trying to kill us, shoot us. We had one service, seven men coming in with guns. I was at a big church, a friend of mine, about 2,000 people. And when I came in, they were stationed all throughout the church. And the one man was standing right behind me. And they sent me threats. They said, we're going to come and kill you in that service. I don't know. It was just, we got those things a lot, you know, a lot. My that wife and I had to move continually into security places. Um, they went to our houses, circular houses with cars, with guns. And, but we got, we got it sorted with the police and stuff like that. But until we got into a very secure place, I don't know why those things happened. You know, now it calmed down a bit. I don't know why it happened. Um, we were radical. We were moving in a lot of power, you know. Um, now you come down because you're pastoring and you're shepherding and so on. But moving in power, you just get into a church of 3,000 people. There will be power. Demons will manifest. And if there's a witch, what I would do with this, if somebody's a Satanist, I say, you stand up. You're a Satanist. You're doing, if I, because they would come and sit and record our meetings, you know. And then I would just, but I would love them. I would go to them. I'd put my hand on them. So I love you so much. You know, you're welcome in the service, but I know you are a Satanist and I know you come and spy on me to do. And that made them mad, you know. So, <laughs> so um, we had that type of opposition, persecution. And then obviously we had the church persecuting us. Um, mm. I mean, our ministry was always, had fruits, always had fruits. I don't think there was a time when our ministry haven't had fruits. But ministers do get competitive. I think maybe, I don't want to use the word insecure, so, but maybe it's insecure or so. So they did a TV show against us, had no fruits. Um, you know, they just exposed, they tried to expose, they said the most ridiculous thing and the whole TV show worked out for our good. So I didn't go on to the TV show or anything. I sent lawyers and said, I'm not going to go on. And now we're going to see prophetically how this is going to happen more and more to the church. So everybody pointing the finger at me when it happened in 2020. Well, I must say no minister turned against me or anything. Like, I actually felt I had more compassion on me, you know, mm -hmm. because going through persecution, but you know, we must be quick, not, we must not be quick to point our finger. If somebody is so-called exposed, by secular media, because next year it can be us, yeah. you know? So on that TV show, they lied 100%, didn't affect our church. Um, the person on that show that was the main, so pastors did this against us to try to stop our church. The one pastor, the person that said they're a pastor, I believe they're not a pastor, I believe they're in witchcraft, but they lost everything. They lost their job, they lost everything after that TV show, you know, and they have nothing left today. So I just have a rule, I never attack if somebody's in the ministry, I'm not going to attack them. If I see somebody doing the work of God, if I see a miracle there or I see the hand of God, I'm going to keep my lips sealed, you know. And I think that's what the church lacks today because I still believe in the whole David Saul. I don't want to touch the anointing. I don't want to touch yes. the mantle. Um, when David cut the piece, 
of Saul's mantle. He repented, you know. We're not putting man above God or anything like that. I just still have respect for if heaven anoints a man. Yeah, I mean. Because heaven might have anointed somebody 10 years ago. Maybe they're not anointed today, but heaven once approved of them. Yes. And heaven will have always, then always approved of them. They can mess up here, but there was a time when heaven approved of them. Mm. You know, and I'm not going to come in between that. So we had all that persecution. We had a lot of persecution from ministers and so on. But then about the last two, three years, the tide really began to turn. I mean, I think people, I guess people wait and see if you're lost and so on. Yes. But our churches show a lot of fruits, you know. Um, yes. It's a lot of importation in our church. So when we send people out uh, to plant church, it's just, this is importation. They, within yeah. a year and a half, they're bigger than me, you know? So it's importation. I believe in the double portion anointing. And um, so those are just some of the persecution. Mm. That we yeah, no, no, you are yeah. definitely getting <laughs> persecution. Obviously and there's international persecution and so on also, yes. but yeah. No, that's no but the enemy, I mean, enemy wants to shut down. Obviously we, the, the devil's afraid of a powerful church because it's ultimately mm. a powerful church that will change cities and nations. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the enemy has a problem with people going to church where there's no power and no presence. Not, and not he's like, yeah. he's not, he's not threatened. I mean, yeah. we in our church also had a, a lady who was in witchcraft came to, to curse us. And, you know, um, so the enemy wants to oppose. And so, so one thing I've seen is like, in terms of when it comes to persecution, it's often the church that persecutes Christians, as you, as you mentioned mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And, I've seen a, a large parts of the body of Christ, they, they operate in fear. They are afraid of something they don't understand. So even like your stories now mm, mm. is like, oh, okay, is it really, is it really it God, you know? And, yeah. and, and, and then people can move into fear and then start to falsely accuse. Mm. Um, but what I, what encourages them about your the, the stories is like God ultimately backs up those whom he anoints, mm. you know, if, if, you know, it's, like Jesus coming to the apostle Paul or Saul and saying, why, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting exactly. Christ? You know, Paul ultimately persecuting the church, but yet Jesus says, you're actually persecuting me. So yes. when we speak against one another, we speak against Christ. Exactly. You know, and so one of my, my passions is to, and that's why we're doing this interview is that the body of Christ can see a bit more of who you really are yes. and your story, but also to celebrate the variety in the body of Christ, you know, so you are, prophet and you function in the prophetic and signs and wonders, but it's maybe different to somebody else's flow or section of the Obviously. body of Christ, yes. but there's yes. diversity, but Absolutely. ultimately it points to Jesus and lives are being transformed and the fruit yes. reveals, you know, that this is truly Jesus changing lives. Yes. But so when it comes to the, the persecution, so, so Leon, how do you what, I mean, obviously it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy to, mm. you know, just a little bit that I've experienced in my life. It, it can really affect one's heart. My feel is the enemy, he wants to make us bitter. He mm. wants to make fivefold ministers bitter, disillusioned, yes. offended, yes, to yes, defile yes. the anointing yes. on one's life. Yes, yes, so yes. how do you very go through the process to keep your heart pure and soft and, you know, forgiving and- Very difficult. I mean, you know, very difficult. One person that started the TV show against us, the Lord told me one day, he said, will you forgive them? What did he say? I had an encounter with the Lord. And I, he, the Lord asked me this, I had a this vision. And the Lord said to me, if you would be able to see them now, face to face with another big minister present, what would you do? I said, I'm going to. I'm going to say they did this, they did this against me, they did that against me. You know, how evil they are here. Why did they do that? I'm going to expose everything. I'm going to, because they need to be reprimanded. That's what I said to the Lord. And the Lord said, see, that's why you're not ready to be used yet. And uh, then I saw the vision and it played out. And the Lord said, and I saw myself talking. The Lord said, this is how it should be done. And uh, I saw myself talking and saying that to the person. I said, please forgive me where I have offended you. You know, and he said, you must carry meekness to where even if somebody's wrong, they did everything against you, ask them or forgive them, but ask them that they forgive you, that type of thing, you know. So nobody can come against somebody that's repenting. Yeah. You know, yeah. so uh, 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 whether we are right or wrong, I think will be the greatest, whether we are, if we are right, but we accept wrong to be accepted by God is a big test. So you know you are right or you didn't do something, but you are seen as if you've done the wrong. And you cannot, you cannot vindicate yourself. And the Lord obviously taught me a verse. He says, I am your vengeance. I will have vengeance 
on yeah, your behalf. Man. And if you have vengeance, if you vindicate yourself, I cannot vindicate you. Yeah, you get in the so way, yeah? We you get, get in, in the way. way. <laughs> God has to vindicate. If God doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah. Like the, the three boys in the furnace of fire, if God doesn't deliver us, he doesn't deliver us. Yeah. But we still don't bow on knee to, to, to Baal. So um, uh, same with me. If the Lord will vindicate me, he'll vindicate me. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah. But um, he took me through a lot of brokenness, took me through a lot of burn. I, because of the persecution, I might have not handled it correctly. I was very outspoken, like, oh, you know, I'll just be very outspoken, not defensive, but my personality is very outspoken spoken and um we, we went through burnout as, as a result of it through especially the church uh, speaking against me brothers and sisters ministers and um you know i've been through a lot of burnout it affected me for about two to three years our church all carried on growing but i had to pull back work on my body and um i took like a step back for two years just to focus on my body and to get my mind right and my heart right although i was still preaching everything but i wouldn't have meetings or I was very, yeah, I just had to, I was burned out. So I was instructed by ministers just to focus on my body, you know? Yes. And, and I think, I think it was Rassi Erasmus. I think so. That said, you know, the tongues of my brothers have killed me, you know, uh, just before he passed away, great evangelist in South Africa, great revivalist, Rassi Erasmus, one of the generals. And, um, he was caught, I think he was caught drinking and, still doing ministry. And he said, it was the tongues of my brothers that brought me to this place. So you're absolutely right. We have to watch our hearts with bitterness, with discouragement, discontent, and then unbelief that the devil wants to bring in yes. to uh, make us bitter. And the anointing is pure. It is not mixed. It is not. And I believe you will be tasted, tasted, tasted like gold and fire. So the Lord used all of that to taste me. You know, if his greatest yeah. Caesar is going to yeah. come, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be great if it, uh, but it was very tough dealing with the persecution because when you persecute it, you have nobody to turn to yeah. because people, um, will just, they, they, it's like God removes. I don't, I, I've learned not to take it personally. It's like God will remove people and it's not even in their house to remove themselves, but they're ordered by God to remove, be removed from you so that you can go through a test, you know? So, um, humility, you know, the Bible says this, and I just always stuck to it, that God resists the proud yeah. and gives grace to the humble. Yes. And in a time of brokenness, you need grace. And, um, uh, and the mistake is if people fall into the season and they got a lot of power, influence, then we get the situations where you have the scandals and yep, those things. Absolutely. You know? So, so I th I'm thankful to God that that has happened when I'm young. I must be I was falling in sin, but the brokenness, the rejection, the pain, the bitterness I had to deal with in my heart, you know, that it didn't happen at the age of 50 or when we were bigger and the influence was bigger because yes. then, you know, moral sin can come in and moral failure can come in. So I see it as tests and yes. uh, it challenges yeah. me yeah. to stay in the secret place. It challenges me to stay my, keep my prayer life up because you can't pray for somebody if you're bitter against them. So I try to pray for somebody that is my enemy all the time. Amen. I try to bless them all yes. the time or do good because, you know, everything in me would resist that. So I try to do the opposite. No, oh, that's but, good. And I mean, as you said, the, God uses the persecution to mold us and form us, you know, I mean, if you really want to move in the power of God, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it, it's like modern Western Christianity. They often want the power, like the resurrection life. Mm -hmm. But it's something I felt the Lord show me is that if we don't go through the cross, you know, if we, if we, if we don't die to self, if we don't, um, you know, have our flesh circumcised, if mm -hmm. we don't embrace that brokenness, first go through the cross mm. and then walk in power, the power will destroy, mm. you know, power. Yeah, your character not has to be to... shaped to carry the glory. Yes, you know? absolutely. So, um, if not, you see, Satan always wants to give something instantly. So yeah. he came to Jesus and he said, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. I'll give yeah. you this. And, and Jesus said, no, I'm going through this fast in my father's time. And I think that um, Satan is there to offer things without paying a price for it, without being tested. Mm. And if you take a piece of iron that has not gone through the fire, it's got, um, what do they call it? Discrepancies, or I think they call it something like that inside, you know, um, impurities yeah, in the impurities, iron. Yeah. So now when a building is built on it, it'll crack and it'll break. Mm. But if it's put in the fire, it'll become strong to keep the weight of yes. that building up. Now we are God's building. The Bible says when you pray in the spirit, build up your own spirit like an edifice, mm. you know, the word edifice is like a high towered building. Mm. So when you pray in the spirit, you build up your spirit, man. And that is how you, I try to stay, sorry, try to stay strong in the spirit is just staying, stick to basic principles, the secret place. The secret place is what made me, meaning that is from the beginning of my salvation, I stuck to that for hours. I would spend time in the secret place and that would be prayer, the word, 
And that's where the prophetic would flow from. That's where everything would flow from is that place. Yes, that's good. But I agree what you said. You know, probably the, the most painful thing in Christianity is when it's brothers mm. in Christ falsely accusing. It's like it's a weapon the enemy uses, like, you know, the Judas kind of thing, you know, where he denied Christ and yes. betrayed Christ. It yes, hurts yes. like nothing else, yes, you know. Yes, yes. And so obviously God can use it. The scripture says, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness. So we need to see it's a blessing. Yes, we rejoice yes, yes. and be exceedingly Absolutely. glad. I'm continuously trying to get excited. Praise God. Thank you. Rejoice. Absolutely. Rejoice at the, the challenges and the, and the persecution. Let it mold. But I love what you're saying, to forgive, to bless, and that is awesome. You know, so the purity and power, those two, when they, when they, when they are together, you know, then sustainable ministries. I love what you're saying, you know, the, the process God has been uh, working in your life, and that sets you up for that God can use you more, more, more powerfully. So, amen. So we're going to continue in the next session. We're going to no get problem. into more of the, the get into the prophetic mm -hmm. and prophets, and we're going to unpack some of that in the next session. Thank you so much. Thanks. Power and purity. We need both in our lives and churches if Jesus is to be fully glorified. So some tend to focus solely on the purity side of things, neglecting the power, which leads to powerless ministries. And others neglect the purity and things fall apart and bring dishonor to the name of Jesus. Let's embrace both purity and power. In the next session, Prophet Leon de Prius shares what New Testament prophets are. He gives three levels of the prophetic and a key principle to unlock the anointing in your life and church. So click on the end screen icon for session three. <music>